good to see you, Milton. It's been a really long time. I, oh, hi, everybody. Uh, this is Milton. Milton, this is my Storytime audience. Uh, they come in for Storytime every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We read some fun stories, tell a couple jokes. Um, are you okay, Milton? One second, everybody. Milton, Mil Milton, what's wrong? Really? Oh, I didn't know that. I'm sorry, I didn't know. I... Milton's camera shy. Milton, do you wanna, do you wanna get off camera? You wanna say hi before you go, or do you just wanna, just wanna go? Okay. I feel bad. I didn't, I didn't know he was camera shy, but. He is my really good friend. I haven't seen him in a while. Um, that's kind of what I, the stories I have today are about unexpected friends. You never know when you're going to find a new friend. Um, Milton and I met years ago. We didn't know I was going to meet him. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I got to see him again. I'm sure we're all excited to be able to see each other pretty soon once we can all stop sheltering at home. But until then, we can read some fun books, have some fun, play some games. Uh, the first book we're going to read today is... Room on the Broom by Julia Donaldson. The witch had a cat, and a hat that was black, and long ginger hair and a braid down her back. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on the broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the witch wailed and how the cat spat. When the wind blew so wildly, it blew off the hat. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with the hat in his jaws. He dropped it politely, then eagerly said, as the witch pulled the hat firmly down on her head, I am a dog, as keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. And the witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Over the fields and the forests they flew, the dog wagged his tail and the stormy wind blew. The witch laughed out loud and held on to her hat, but away blew the bow from her braid, just like that. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow, but no bow could be found. Then out from a tree with an ear-splitting shriek, there flapped a green bird with the bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low, then said, as the witch tied her braid in the bow, I'm a bird, as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch, so the bird fluttered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Over the reeds and the rivers they flew, the bird shrieked with glee and the stormy wind blew. They shot through the sky to the back of beyond. The witch clutched her bow, but let go of her wand. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Then all of a sudden from out of a pond leapt a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely, then said with a croak, as the witch dried the wand on the fold of her cloak. I'm a frog, as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? Yes, said the witch, so the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy and... The broom snapped in two. Down fell the cat and the... Fell the cat and the dog and the frog. Down they went tumbling into a bog. The witch's half broomstick flew into a cloud, and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. I am a dragon, as mean as can be, and witch with french fries tastes delicious to me. No, cried the witch, flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. Help, cried the witch, flying down to the ground. She looked all around but no help could be found. The dragon drew near with a glint in his eyes and said, just this once, I'll have witch without fries. But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of a ditch rose a horrible beast. 
It was tall, dark, and sticky, and feathered and furred. It had four frightful heads, it had wings like a bird, and its terrible voice, when it started to speak, was a yowl, and a growl, and a croak, and a shriek. It dripped, and it squelched as it strode from the ditch, and it said to the dragon, Buzz off! That's my witch! The dragon drew back, and he started to shake. I'm sorry, he sputtered. I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. And he spread out his wings and was off through the sky. Then down flew the bird, and down jumped the frog. Down climbed the cat, and whew, said the dog. And thank you, oh thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be in that dragon's inside. Then she filled up her cauldron and said with a grin, Find something, everyone, throw something in. So the frog found a lily, the cat found a cone, the bird found a twig, and the dog found a bone. Then they threw them all in, and the witch stirred them well, and when she was stirring, she muttered a spell. Iggity, ziggity, zaggity, zoom! Then out rose a truly magnificent broom with seats for the witch and the cat and the dog, a nest for the bird, and a pool for the frog. Yes, cried the witch, and they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. The end. You never know when you're gonna find friends. Sometimes the friends that you have don't always start out as friends. Sometimes you might not necessarily like the person that you're friends with, not that you'll become friends with. It's kind of the start of the next story we have is The Knight and the Dragon by Tommy DePaolo. Once upon a time, there was a knight in a castle who had never fought a dragon. And in a cave not too far away was a dragon who had never fought a knight. One day, the knight went to the castle library and took out all the books that he could find on dragon fighting. He's reading how to fight dragons. Meanwhile, back at the cave, the dragon had rummaged through all the things from his ancestors and found some books on knight fighting. He's reading how to fight knights. The knight began to build some armor. So he's reading armor building, he's melting, hammering, and he made himself a suit of armor. The dragon practiced swishing his tail. He has the art of tail swishing. He's practicing swish swash swooshing his tail. Meanwhile, back at the castle, the knight is sharpening swords, Shining the lances, filing maces, painting shields, straightening crossbows. He looks pretty proud of himself. He did a lot of work. Meanwhile, back at the cave, the dragon is practicing making scary faces in the mirror until he gets it just right. And the knight practices fighting a fake dragon. And the dragon practices fighting fake knights, but they're not very good at the start. They need, they need a little bit of practice. But they keep practicing until the knight gets really good at fighting fake dragons, and the dragon gets really good at fighting, fighting fake knights. Finally, the knight and the dragon were both ready. They sent each other a letter and set a time for the fight. The knight's reading to Sir Knight from B Dragon Esquire. And he has to B Dragon Esquire from Sir Knight. And they're ready. And they charge at each other. And they missed each other. They missed each other completely. So they try again. They get ready and they charge at each other. They're running at, her, at each other as fast as they can. But they miss completely. The knight ends up in a tree and the dragon is in a pond, but who's that? Why? 
it's the castle librarian, and she's giving them a couple of books. She's handing the dragon the outdoor cookbook, and she's handing the knight how to build a barbecue. And they sit together, and they read their books. And they form K and D barbecue with the dragon using his fiery breath to cook some burgers, using the suit of armor as his stovetop, lances to hold the burgers, shields as their plates. And together, they became fast friends. They thought they had to fight each other because they're a knight and the dragon, but you don't have to fight. No one ever has to fight. They can be friends, like the knight and the dragon. The last book we have for today's story time is We Don't Eat Our Classmates by Ryan Higgins, which is just good advice for everybody. Penelope Rex was nervous. It's not every day a little T-Rex starts school. What are my classmates going to be like? Will they be nice? How many teeth will they have? The, this was very important. Penelope's mom bought her a new backpack with ponies on it. Ponies were Penelope's favorite because ponies are delicious. And Penelope's dad packed her lunch of 300 tuna sandwiches and one apple juice. Finally, the big day came, and Penelope Rex was very surprised to find out that all of her classmates were children. So she ate them, because children are delicious. Penelope Rex, said Mrs. Noodleman, we don't eat our classmates. Please spit them out at once. So she did. It was not the best way to start school. Still, Penelope was determined to have a good first day. She tried hard to make friends at recess. She fingerprinted some of her best work. She even saved Griffin Emery a seat at lunch. Oh, you can sit here pointing at her plate. Penelope started to notice everyone was making friends but her. It was lonely. When she got home, her dad asked about her first day of school. I didn't make any friends, Penelope cried. None of the children wanted to play with me. Penelope Rex, her father asked, did you eat your classmates? Well, Maybe sort of just a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to make friends, said her dad, especially if you eat them. You see, Penelope, children are the same as us on the inside, just tastier. That gave Penelope a lot to think about. The next day, Penelope tried really hard but poor Penelope could not stop herself from eating her classmates. Mrs. Noodleman, Penelope ate William Amoto again. And they were all afraid of her. Except Walter. Walter was a goldfish. So Penelope tried to make friends with him. Will you be my friend? Jump! Eee! cried Penelope. He's eating my finger! Wow! Once Penelope found out what it was like to be someone's snack, she lost her appetite for children. She stopped eating her classmates even when Cece Woodman spilled barbecue sauce all over herself. And soon, Penelope made friends. I found you. Want a brownie? I helped make them. Now, 
Even when children look especially delicious, she peeks at Walter and remembers what it's like when someone tries to eat you. And Walter, the goldfish, stares right back at her and licks his lips. Because dinosaurs are delicious. The end. Sometimes the thing with making friends is trying to understand where they're coming from. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this story time. I hope you'll join us next time. Uh, until then, happy reading.